Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Kashif Move podcast. If you're new here, each week I sit down with the guests and we discuss their career so far, the highs, the lows, and what's next for them. Today's guest is Albert Lawrence. We met back in 2019 at the 2019 Black Web Fest. And if you've been listening to all of our episodes so far, you'll notice a trend. Like I've literally am <laughs> interviewing everyone I met in 2019 out in New York, which was an amazing experience, but Albert is another one. He is multifaceted. He is an actor, writer, director, and a TV, a television host. Like he currently is one of the hosts of Amazon Live, all the way in LA. So welcome to the show, Albert. Thank you so much, Kashif. It's a blast to be able to to catch up with you and to kick it on your show. Congratulations on season two. Thank you so much. As you guys know, I am recording season two now. The first season was all about Black women in film and TV. And I did have some uh, US natives as well. I had KD, I don't know if you remember her. She mm-hmm. had a web series called Leah the Late Bloomer and she was great to have on as a guest. So yeah, so it's just like, I want to continue that with all, to highlight all of the Black men that I know who are doing great things across the pond, as you guys like to say. And I thought <laughs> I'd start off with my US contacts. You know, it's easier to to shoot with you guys first so I don't get to save money on studio time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I support it. I love okay. it. <laughs> so welcome to the show and I mean like so tell us about you. How did you get started? I mean you're doing so much so how did you get started? Yeah. No thank you. You know so I'm an only child and um, and I grew up in Alexandria, Virginia, which is right outside of our nation's capital, right outside of Washington DC here in the States and growing up since I didn't have any siblings around, like I had my cousins, some of my cousins that were my age, and that was fun too. But for the most part, I found that like church and school were often the places where I would get a chance just to kick it with people who were my own age. And so because of that, I think that that helped me to grow very fond of just spending time in those places. Um, And so when I was at church, I was very involved with the youth group and choir and, and, and all of those like great moments. Um, and then when I was in school, I was doing a lot of theater and and uh, and just doing as many team sports, even though I was horrible at the team sports. She, and not because I'm not a good team player, just because I'm not a good athlete. Um, <laughs> but, but I would show up and I had good spirit, but like I, I wasn't really getting involved in the nets. Um, but, but, but I really did love the opportunity to just always be with people. And so in high school, that's really when I got a chance to um, not only do theater, which is what I'd been doing so much before, but I also got a chance to really start playing with cameras and getting a chance to uh, work with our school's morning news show and really experiment with that. So then when it came time for me to go to college and apply to go to college, I um, I put together a video. Uh, I put together a video for like some, with some highlights uh, from things that I was really proud of from within school, and um, and I sent it off to a few different universities, and I ended up um, getting in and choosing to go to Yale. And once I got to Yale, that just opened up a whole nother world of, um, of of diversity in terms of meeting plenty of people who came from different places than I came from, um, who had different gifts who had uh different stories uh and and giving us all the chance to kind of just like combine and like live in the same suites in the same rooms as each other and work on the same clubs and and, uh, and collaborate on projects and so Kashif I feel like in college that's really where I got an opportunity to 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 see some of the value and some of the necessity of collaboration when it comes to filmed art forms like I already knew that it existed in uh you know on the stage right but like in terms of the the film stuff realizing that sure you could be an auteur if you wanted and like write everything yourself and film everything yourself and just make it a one man film and you could edit it and you could you could do all of that yourself if you wanted to and and I tried um, to do some of that, but like I found that for me it was just more fun and more practical uh, to team up with folks uh, because they other people push you, like uh, other people challenge you, you, you know, um, and, and and then like and other people really do build you up when you find the right squad. So so going to college, um, that, that that's one of the key things that I grew to appreciate there. And then so from there, um, that also gave me the chance to, to even explore outside of the United States, because prior to going off to school, I had 
Um, and so I ended up getting an internship in Singapore with HBO Asia in between my uh, sophomore and junior year. And um, excuse me, in between one of those, those summers, I actually came to LA during one of the summers and New York during another one. And then uh, to Singapore for another. And during that Singapore internship, um, that exposed me to just how some of American culture is viewed uh, overseas and how it's exported. Because at the time, they wanted me to come uh, kind of like take a look at some of the, as an intern, look at some of the campaigns that HBO Asia was doing for some of the shows that originated in the United States. So at the time, it was Sex in the City and mm. Entourage. And I, I, at the time, I loved Entourage because Entourage to me. Are, are you from, have, have you seen Entourage at all? Yeah, yeah, I love Entourage. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a show for me that mm -hmm. like really made me think: Is this what Hollywood is like? Like, like because gr growing up, I would watch Saved by the Bell, and Saved by the Bell is what I thought that high school was going to be. So <laughs> Entourage is what, <laughs> what I thought that like LA would be like. <laughs> and so, but, but going over in Singapore and seeing how they were marketing these shows and and for example, you would see in different spots that like, I, I believe that there were territories where the word sex could not be written on a billboard. So like they couldn't even write the name sex in the city on the billboard to promote sex in the city. So they had to be creative and clever with how are you going to market a show whose name that you can't even put fully put, you know, in public. And so just I, I spent a little bit of time in India um, as a part of that internship as well, too. And so it was just this expansive like brain overload of like, oh, my gosh, the culture and like the food and food to me is such an important part of any culture. And it's like all oh, the spices are like I love, yeah, love yeah. some heat. Hundred percent. They weren't afraid to like put some heat in the food because she I was like, yes, yes, I didn't have to douse it with hot sauce. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I totally so, yes. You know, and so 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 getting a chance to just see life in action in those different ways just kind of continue to drive my curiosity of wanting to explore different cultures. Um, and then like trying to figure out how do I combine my experiences and package them in a way where I can share them with others um, because uh, <laughs> the, like the, the, the whole idea of, it's funny, there's a, there's a hip hop lyric that's surging in my head right now that's completely inappropriate that I'm not gonna quote <laughs> right now. But, 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 but the essence of this said lyric is that, you know, it's not fun if, if your friends can't also uh, like, explore and and partake in the joy that, that you are uh, that you're going through so so for me in my mind it's like I love having experiences solo um like I, I'm not afraid to travel a place I'm not afraid to go to the movie theater by myself um I do, I do. you know right I know. <laughs> look look sometimes you just like if there's a film and you want to see it if there's a park and you just want to go you can't always wait on everybody yeah. else to get ready yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do love at some point being able to, to take what I experienced and witnessed and, and funnel it down and share it with people in a way that like might spark something for them as well too. So I love a good dinner party conversation. Um, and I love a good film festival, which is how you and I got a chance mm -hmm. to connect. Uh, because after moving on out to LA after college, um, I worked for Warner Brothers and Fox and uh, Disney, um, a, a, like many of the, the you know multiple studios and entities out here, and I've really had a great opportunity to learn a ton from people who've just been patient with me mm -hmm. and generous with me and um, and giving me opportunities. And so through those relationships and, and through exploring different spaces within the film and television industry, like from marketing to production to post-production to right, like to those different realms, I figured that I wanted to test my hand at writing a short film. You know, like I've, I've watched so much of it. I've, I've been a part of different sides of seeing how, how studios work, but I wanted to really kind of play with some independent cinema and so I teamed up with some friends out here and, uh, and I wrote a film, a short film called Theo's Trade. And, uh, and in it, I act and, and a good friend of mine did most of the direction on it because I couldn't really do a lot of the directing while I was acting. Yeah. And plus he brought like such a tremendous amount of experience to the table with that. Um, and so, uh, so our squad, like we got together, we, we shot this thing uh, 
a friend of mine who I'd met during an internship, um, who's, who's a, tre a tremendous editor, he was like, yo man, like I'll cut your film for you. And so it was really, really the work of quite a few favors um, that, that were called on in in order to make this movie. And the whole idea about the film um, was, and it's, it's wild like that this actually came before uh, we started to see, you know, the current iteration of the Black Lives Matter movement um, in the US, but, but, but pretty much, the story was about a guy who had grown up in a uh, who'd grown up in the South, but then had gone to Chicago in order to be a reporter. Um, and while he was a reporter in Chicago, he kept finding that he was being assigned the same stories every day. Um, stories that he felt were just stereotypical and that weren't truly reflective of the black community. Um, and so he he got tired of it. He got tired of of feeling like he was just a pawn in the system. So he moves back to the South and he ends up starting up a museum. Um, and it's sort of like a living history museum where he would perform reenactments um, about figures that history had forgotten, um, but that still carried resonance and that he just felt needed to be seen. Um, and then in the midst of all of that, somebody from the news station comes and tries to lure him back. So it's about this, this internal battle, uh, but that's expressed uh, in an external way of like, what's what's the role of the news what's the role of the media what's the role of the press and these are all things that were like actively um going on in my mind Kashif when when I when I made it and uh and so the the, the the short gave me a chance to sort of like work some of that on out but now looking at the media and looking at things that have happened over the past two years I'm just like whoa whoa <laughs> dude like <laughs> man like i i thought that i was trying to figure some stuff out then yeah. my goodness now i've got even more to think about um so so it's 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 been wild in, in that regard um but now i'm doing some other now i'm i'm doing some additional things we could talk you know maybe some about that later but i know that you uh you know were initially interested in kind of hearing some about the about the film so yeah yeah well that's great i mean it was good to hear because i was gonna ask you what was your motivation behind writing it and it's good to hear that because it it, it kind of resonates to where you've been and where you mm. got to at that point and now where you are now and so yeah. i mean that's always great powerful uh cinema or just storytelling when you can make stuff what people can relate to or where it comes from a place of okay struggle but not just necessary struggle but then it's, it's from a place where you can tell it in a story authentically and then be able to translate that to screen and so that's always very good so that's yeah. good to hear that's good to hear because it was one of several short films that's what obviously screened at Black Web Fest mine was screened I think more so early in the in the session that day yeah because mine was approached you from yeah. Yeah, and it was a spoken word poetry film. I wrote with, well, I didn't write it, but I directed it. But I worked with two writers who are based in Houston, Texas. And um, so, yes, yeah, so it was like, okay, I was able to come to the US and actually like screen it while working with US writers and stuff like that. So that was really cool. So that's really good to hear your journey from the start to beginning. You made some good points because you said you grew up as an only child. I'm technically an only child. Oh, <laughs> what word. I mean by that is, is that... I have two half siblings. I have an okay. older half sibling sister and a younger, a very younger half brother. He came as a surprise, uh, <laughs> um, so, as it does sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, there's a big difference. We're 17 years apart. So when I say wow. he came as a surprise, he did. My dad was very busy. Um, <laughs> And um, so being prolific, you know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I grew up technically as an only child, so and it really grew up with my half sister, so I understand. So, and I grew up in a very creative whole household, so my mom like studied interior design she was a big oh, wow. therapist my dad's been a dj my whole life so he's way into his 60s so i grew up very creative so i was used as an only child you tend to be able to know how to entertain yourself and this was before mm. tv was good well i mean tv being good is debatable what i mean by that is it's like you can't sit around watching tv all day there's going to be loads of reruns so you yep. always found ways to be creative and <laughs> And to you know really yeah just keep yourself entertained so I definitely understand that so that's where my creative juices kind of came from similar to yours in terms of that so did performing arts did a bit of well I was good at sports so that's something you can't relate to you win you win in that category yeah, you yeah, win. Yeah. <laughs> 
and I did I competed nationally doing athletics and stuff like that Whoa. and then was able to kind of get back into performing arts but then behind the scenes so I definitely understand that um I understood that sense of community because when you get to college and stuff that you are working in the team but also know how to do your role specifically mm-hmm. like within a team and then outside of that when you're trying to do it yourself you kind of tend to do it yourself I'm sure you did that with Theo as well you know as an independent filmmaker that's kind of what it is like yeah you want to get a team but you can't rely on everybody because you can't afford to pay everybody so you can't really rely on them to have the same level of passion or drive to make the project that's right goal so you always have to be on top of everything and I think for now I'm very lucky because now I'm in a place where I can spread my wings a bit but because Mm -hmm. I've built okay my own reputation but then at the same time I'm able to mentor other people and they want to do well Mm -hmm. by working with me so that they have you know okay a good recommendation moving forward so it takes time but then you get there but that's but there's still struggles (laughs) right and the filmmakers so yes how did you fund your film though how did you fund yeah yeah so the way that I funded my film was I actually I'd saved up some money from from gigs that I had done prior to that um and and it's it's funny because she because I find that like now that's something that I continue to do. Like, and it's funny, I don't, I don't necessarily do it in a formal way where I don't keep an account and say like, well, this is going to be my creative investment account where I invest in, you know, in my next project. But I think that kind of like mentally, I know that there's a portion of just look, just how we we grew up. Mm-hmm. Like growing up in the church, you're taught to to tie ten percent, right? So you're supposed mm-hmm. to take ten percent of everything you get and you put it to the church, um, or you somehow find a way for it not to just go back into you. You you give it give it away to someone else. Now I I feel like in addition to that, like I there's a part of me that that knows that when I bring money in from other endeavors, that like part of that money is going to need to be invested back into the craft. And so at the time, Theo's trade was the craft that I was pouring money back into. Um, and so I made an investment in that way. Uh, I hired my um, I hired my uh, my partner in it, my, my co-star. So uh, her name is Atsuko. Um, and so hired her. Uh, and and there were some other positions on the creative team that um, that were paid for, like our DP, mm-hmm. even though he gave us a tremendous discount. Um, but the setting, the location was like gorgeous because I wanted to find a place that could simulate a blacksmith shop. And we really, really lucked out because I found um, a museum in Orange County here in California, the Heritage Museum, that actually had a functioning blacksmith shop, like that they had kept up to date, like with the anvils and the fires and the thing. And so I went and I asked them if I could rent that spot for a day. And they said, well, look, you can use this for free, but like you, if as long as you become like a certified blacksmith. So I was like, I'm a certified blacksmith. So I ended up, so my my only my main investment in that was like I paid to take courses to become a blacksmith and and so so now I can like hit like take the hammer and I can totally you know wield some things I'm like oh cool I feel like Thor you know it's kind of cool um and so it's so like it's it's hilarious to shoot because I'm sure that you can that you and your listeners can also relate to this in terms of the different skills that you pick up along the way that were not the point, like you didn't get into this in order to learn certain things, oh. but just like out of necessity, yeah. you end up gathering these additional skills. It, it almost, it kind of reminds me a bit um, of something like the Wizard of Oz, right? Where like Dorothy, she's just trying to get from point A to point B, just trying to get over to Emerald City, you know, just like get me back home. But yeah. along the way, like she's meeting these characters and she's like picking up skills and learning about bravery and learning about intelligence and, you know, and, and in all of this stuff and learning about heart and belief when that was not the reason she got into the game in, in the <laughs> first place. Yeah. But you still, but by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh my gosh, l- look at look at what you've amassed along the way. So I really do try to operate out of a out of a thought that like, let's not waste any experience. Let's let like if possible, 
even if you don't like the job, even if you're in it, then you're like, oh my gosh, I only got two more weeks on this project. I can't wait for these <laughs> weeks to finish. Like still, 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 still just try to like squeeze something that can be a benefit, something that you'll be able to take along with you when you go. Because man, we don't get any of this time back, whether we had fun during it or whether we don't, like the time is gone. It's, it's, it's gone when it's over. And so all that we have is what we choose to, to hold on to either what scarred us or what we're going to use in order to build ourselves and others up. So, so, so that's something that I, that I often kind of think about in that regard. Yeah, you made some really good points because that is independent filmmaking or low budget, you know, <laughs> because yeah. it's who you know, who's going to give you favors, you know, who's going to give you a discount rate and you've got to literally break down like, okay, this is our budget. We're going to shoot for this amount of hours. Like, what can you do now? We're not mm-hmm. Disney. So calm down with your rates. You know, like, you know, you try to explain like, yo, what they don't, you know, and it's a lot of back and forth sometimes. And it's like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to have to do this myself. And it's the truth because I've had to do so much stuff, even till now, like I'm doing a project and I just had to let a stylist go because she agreed a certain rate. Then what it's a half day rate for prep. So I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Then okay. she was like, travel costs, I understand. But then she was like, but then I recommended her for another project. And so she was talking to my assistant. And oh. then she conveniently told my assistant for another project that she'll be coming from Birmingham. So we're based in London. Birmingham oh. is like, listen, that's far. So oh. you haven't then told us that your travel costs mean that you're going to come from Birmingham. So that's just like saying that, oh, you know what? where I'm out in San Francisco and you're out in LA so you want me to pay for you to come all the way from San Francisco to LA for two days no like what got it's, lost it's, you know because, right yeah it's like huh so yeah so yeah so then you okay so it's fine we can be the stylist we can be the stylist we can get the clothes we can get we've got the measurements we've got the lookbook we'll do it ourselves so that's what we're saying we have to wear multiple hats at all times right you know it's not just being a producer you've got to be so many different things and then pull it off (laughs) exactly and then pull it and pull it off because it's like if 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 we're watching the project and we're like "Mm, everything else in the scene is great but something looks a little bit off like the butt (laughs) still stops with you and it's like oh that's right because that hat this is a period piece but that hat is not of this era (laughs) now i'm you know so so it's funny because she because we realize and you see, and when you have to do this stuff, you start to understand more and more that like, whoa, and now I get why crews are so big because like the, like each person, the, the stylist and hair and makeup and the line director and the script supervisor, like all of these roles exist mm-hmm. for a reason oh, yeah. because projects need someone who's going to do them. They yeah. need someone who's going to do them and yeah. do them well. And it's like, and, and, and as an independent filmmaker i know that so you know there are projects that you do that are fully um like sponsored by you like where where you're paying for everything and then but the only time the only way that you're even able to do that Mm -hmm. is by also having something else having another gig um or even still working in the creative film Mm -hmm. and in the creative industry that is paying you and so i know like sometimes it can be this dance right because Mm -hmm. We believe, like as artists, like we believe that artists should get paid. We believe that, that oh, people yeah. should get paid. Mm-hmm. And so the the intention is always like, look, we let's not take advantage of, of each other. Let's like and I and I understand yeah. if if you want if you have a rate that um that like maybe I'm just not prepared to to hit that rate right now, but but like no harm, no foul, like yeah. no exactly. offense taken no offense taken if we like we just can't do this right now maybe but trust that like there will be a day there will be a time where where we both will be able to do this together and then i'd love for us to collaborate at that time and so i uh do you sync up with that you kind of feel me with that oh yeah I totally agree with that because I understand that some companies or some people will have the budget and they just choose to not pay you your rate or what Mm. you're worth and I totally understand that and it's always up to you to decipher what you want to commit your time to but my thing is is like don't lie don't be don't lie don't don't try to okay (laughs) oh well you know what I know they've got this low rate but if I do this and this then I can still get the money that I want it's like (laughs) 
what are you doing because yeah so then and then that's what I don't like and that's what I feel like there needs to be more conversations of because you don't hear enough of people saying that okay well you're actually trying to cheat me when I told you mm. this was low budget so what what mm. do you think the definition of low budget is do you think low budget means 50,000 like pounds or dollars like I'm trying to figure it out so, <laughs> it's also like, relative yeah. but like you're but I think that you're dead on like in terms of like let's just let's get the, it's funny because as like as an entrepreneur and and as a performer one of my least favorite things to to have to talk about when I'm working with a new client is I hate having to to give them a number right like I like when they're like okay well what's your rate and I know I should be I, like that should not make me bristle because you're a businessman. You should like, and I, I know, and I do it because I have to, but that's always my least favorite part of the conversation where I have to come up with this number because especially if it's a project that I know that I want to work on, that I want to do, the truth is I probably would be willing to do it for free, but my mom, <laughs> and I love this, my mom, she will always ask me, I'm like, hey, mom, so I'm going to like do this thing. And she'll be like, oh, great. That's awesome. So how much? How much are you getting? Like, and I'm like, mom, it's not about the money. Da, da, da. And she's like, yeah, but son, like, this is this is not a hobby of yours. Like, this is a profession. And so you should be you should be getting paid. And so it's always it's always fun and a fun dance to figure out, you know, because then my rebuttal is like, yeah, mom, but sometimes it's possible to receive value from a project that does not come in the form of dollars and cents or pounds. Yeah. You know, you like sometimes the value is exposure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the value is the opportunity to build a connection with others. And sometimes it's just you really do believe in a specific cause and a specific purpose um, that this group, that this squad, uh, like is, is assembling around. So it's so it's funny, but but my mom's not wrong. Like she like no, no, she's, <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like you got bills to pay, and like the passion don't like they they won't take the passion as as the bills that won't clear at the end of the month. Uh, so I'm like you're right, you're right. <laughs> you made a very good point because like the position I'm in now is that a lot of people come to me with projects for me to exec produce and then it mm. becomes like a co-production with my own production company and mm. so it's me working with them from the ground up to get uh. money to get distribution so yeah so I definitely understand that and it's been paying off now because the projects that I have been exec producing have been getting into big festivals and stuff like yeah. that so yeah so now it's me continuing my job as like okay well we've done this now it's time for me to get a good distribution deal and stuff like that those are the next steps yeah. and so that's what makes it where you you have to decide like I said you've got to decide for where you feel like okay I will maybe not do this for free or I will know my worth and say this is what it is you know because yep. that it's up to you how you do it but especially if it's like a corporation like the advertiser <laughs> company or whatever I was literally just reading a book by Lovey Ajayi Jones and she was saying that her book The Professional Troublemaker and she was saying that you know you need to go in there and get say what your rate is don't lowball yourself because you know HR managers will they've got the budget but they want you to like come step up to the plate and say well no mm -hmm. actually I want uh, let's say 50,000 a year they have the budget for it you know yep. don't hesitate if they don't want to pay you then it, there's nothing wrong with that you can say okay well we can maybe go lower to this amount and stuff and it's yeah it's who I feel like you should know when you should um it's about knowing when the time is right to do that if you're in a really good position for your career yep. to go somewhere say how you know then you can okay this is my rate but if it's yep. like a little bit lower down and it's somebody who you know is independent or you know or you're doing a favor or whatever maybe I'm not saying you always have to because some people aren't worth doing that for but at least just <laughs> think think about it for like think first you know what I mean think yep. especially if I haven't come at you crazy like you know think about <laughs> it. Exactly. no like I, I I really I could not agree with you more in that regard and it's funny because um I think that's fantastic advice you know to, to really really take some time sometimes to think about your worth mm -hmm. um there's a <laughs> there's a show out here and I, and I feel I believe that your version of it is called Dragon's Den um but over mm -hmm. here we have Shark Tank oh, okay yeah, um yeah. 
where, where entrepreneurs will come and, and they'll they'll pitch for investments and investors. And, and sometimes what they end up getting in trouble for, uh, what they end up getting grilled for once they get up in front of these investors is that like their value, their value, the value that they're quoting seems to be like inflated. And then the investors go to be like, why do you think your company is a million dollars? And if and, and if you don't have a strong answer, if you don't have an answer that is, you know, suitable or convincing enough for them, then you don't get the investment, right? You, you won't get the investment in there. But then likewise, I, Kashif, I, <laughs> I have been in situations where um, I've been asked what my rate is for a job. And, and I'll, I'll give a number that like, I thought is good, right? Like, I, like in my mind, like, well, again, I'm just so happy for the opportunity. Like, yeah, I'll do it for this. And I have been told by, and, and thankfully, because like there were friends inside of like the organizations that, that, that were hiring me to do certain things. I have been told like, um, no, I'm not even going to submit that number to the people. Here's what we actually have in the budget. We have allotted more in the budget than what you just quoted yourself at. This is what you should be asking for. And this is what we're going to go for for you. And I was like, what? I was like, I was like that, that doesn't even make any sense. Like from a corporation standpoint, yeah. you'd be like, well, hold on. Why would you choose to spend more money when you could have gotten him for less money? Mm -hmm. But that's where the friendship, that's where the actual relationship yeah. comes on in because mm -hmm. then you find people that are willing to educate you and to help you to like, you know, you're taught to be like humble and like, oh, I'm just so happy for the opportunity that, you know, but look, there is a time for that. <laughs> There's a place for that. And then there is another place where, where you got to be bold, where yeah. you do need to be audacious if you want to grow, if you want for your value and for your perceived value to grow and whatnot, like, you have to ask for certain things sometimes, or thankfully some people will jump on in and tell you, you need to ask for this. And that ends up being something that it really doesn't end up being a lesson. And so now I walk forward with that more and more now, mm -hmm. because like you, look, it's like, look, it's, it's one thing when you, when you're, um, and, and I feel like in our, in our careers, in our lives, hopefully we're always going to be learning. Hopefully I hope, I, I, I don't know. I hope that I've never really hit a peak. Like I hope that I keep on like growing because there's always a chance to get better. And if you're not growing, then you're dying. Well, at least mm -hmm. if you're a plant, that's what it is. Like once you start growing, <laughs> you know, like your leaves start falling off. So like, you know, we, we want to keep on improving. We want mm -hmm. to keep on um, like learning from others and whatnot. And so, so through that, Mm -hmm. I think that often insight can come from all different places. It can come from other filmmakers. It can come from writers. It can come from executives. It can come from all on over. Um, shoot, like it can, it can even come, it can come from, from it can come from who, who's serving you food. It can come from your Uber driver. It can, yeah. there's just like, when you shut yourself down, you're like, the only wisdom that I want to hear in my life is from this executive or from that executive. Yeah. You are playing yourself. You are. You were straight up, because I think, was it, was it Issa Rae? I think Issa Rae said, like, she really was preaching the gospel of networking across, yeah. networking with your peers, mm -hmm. because then we're the ones who get a chance to grow together, and you support each other on projects, on co-productions, exactly. and then you get to really have the squad goals, yeah. become a squad win. Exactly. So, and that's yeah. what I'm hoping, that's what I'm trying to build. Like, I quote that. Issa Rae uh, quote all the time like networking across and her other famous line I'm rooting for everybody black uh yeah so, <laughs> so yeah I definitely understand that because that's what I'm building with my team or my people who I work with you know so that when we mm. all reach to a certain level it's like okay yeah I'm gonna hook my friend up and get them what they deserve and stuff like right. that and that's what growth is and speaking right. of growth like since I last saw you uh, in Black Web Fest in New York two years ago, what ha what has happened next? Like, what was the <laughs> what was the festival run like for Theo's trade? And then also, yeah. like, I mean, I see you're like a host now on Amazon Live, <laughs> interviewing people like Kevin Hart. So, like, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, it's it's funny. Thanks for taking a look at that stuff. Um, yeah, so so hosting and um, doing interviews having conversations um that that's that's truly been something that I've always enjoyed doing I feel like from hosting talent shows in high school all the way through like you know hosting tv shows in in college and whatnot um just because I like to get stories from people I like to like get stories and then share those stories on out and so uh so when I came to LA some of 
like some of my first stuff was like doing red, red carpet interviews and like going to MTV and like kind of like camping out and like and hoping to talk to to P Diddy and then like getting a chance to talk to Diddy and then like and so and and so all of these different opportunities and moments and hustles and man I depending on how long we got like I got stories for you Kashi but <laughs> you want to know about what happened um after Theo's trade yes. <laughs> leading up to now uh-huh. so what happened after Theo's trade was um I believe around that time well, so first off like Theo uh, with Theo I ended up getting a chance to go to New Orleans um for uh Black Film Festival in New Orleans uh, amazing love love that love the love the founder of that and so now I have a true brother now nice. in New Orleans mm-hmm. um and, uh, and, and and honestly that's one of the things that, that that the film really did was um it gave me a chance to just go out and to meet other people who I didn't know yet but that who were just creating dope stuff mm-hmm. um and so like you you know um and so so from New Orleans to New York, um, we got into a festival in Texas that I wasn't able to, to timing wise, just wasn't able to make it out there. But it also got into a festival in Baltimore, which meant a lot to me because um, that's so close to my hometown in Alexandria, Virginia. So when it screened in Baltimore, all my local family was nice. able to come on up and like, and so we could hold it down there together. And that felt phenomenal. Um, and so, so, so that that's some of what Theo did but in the midst of that also I was still hosting and um and and there was a point I want to say that I want to say I did Theo's trade like right after I left the news so I used to work um at a news station out here in LA and uh, and I learned so much at that news station uh and then after that I uh I ended up starting to work for a series that airs um on television out here called Innovation Nation. Um, and that airs on one of our networks, uh, CBS. And actually it, it airs internationally as well too on different okay. channels. But 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 when it, with Innovation Nation, um, every episode we get a chance to travel around and meet people who've just invented really neat things, things that solve problems, uh, you know? So, uh, you know, it, it might be a mom or a dad or a kid that, that was having an issue with a certain thing one day. And they're like, you know, there's nothing out here that already exists that could solve this. Let me just kind of tinker around in the garage and they'll tinker around in the garage and they make something and it ends up really being something that ends up solving other people's problems as well too. Mm -hmm. So I love working on Innovation Nation um, because it it continues to just like refill the spirit. Um, And so, but in the midst of working on Innovation Nation, I also started um, working with Amazon and Amazon, this is really fun. Amazon has a, um, their own version of like a home shopping uh, kind of platform where, uh, I, they have multiple hosts that, you know, talk about whether it's tech or fashion or, um, or like homewares, all those kinds of things. Um, and so I used to fly to New York, uh, maybe about twice a month and, and I would fly to New York twice a month to, to work with Amazon. So I'd go up in their studio mm-hmm. and like, they throw a few different products. I mean, they'll be like, okay, Albert today, this is a toy special. So you're going to talk about like this new Paw Patrol thing. And you're going to talk about, you know, like this, uh, this video game, this Nintendo, this thing. And then, so, so you, you just, you talk about these products, Kashif and they're like, like, all right, talk for 10 minutes. And then you've got the, the, the teleprompter there, but they want you to just kind of like improv and have it be like just relatable and storytelling. So you're just up there like improving and like improving with other people who are like really good. And so you get a chance to have this electricity and it's all live. Wow. It's all live. And I love live because live is so scary because live <laughs> is dangerous. Live, man, like you say the thing and it's out there and you can't get it back. Yeah. So it's like, you, you, it forces you to be present. Yeah. Like it forces you to be present. And so I can't, like, it doesn't give my mind time to just like wander off and be like, oh, well, how come I'm not doing this? Now? It's like, nah, man, like you gotta be here right now. Cause the camera is staring at you right now. And so, um, so I got a chance to start doing that with Amazon. And bro, I was in a groove. Like I was in a really good groove with this like, two times a month flight in New York thing. I was building up my flight, my miles. And you know about building up miles because when you hop back and forth, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> me, you know, it feels good. Um, and so, but 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 in the midst of doing that, and then I'd also started working with uh, with IMDb. Nice. what I always wanted to work with because you know we know IMDB mm-hmm. as the internet movie database the space where when you want to look up a project and see yeah. like wh- who who was that person in the background of yeah. this like yeah. what other yeah. things has this actor done or oh this yeah. director let me see what else like it's a resource for us all in the creative industry and so um so I started working with them doing press junkets so I would interview 
And I, and I feel like at that time, um, some of my early interviews with them were with like Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx and, and Tiffany Haddish, Haddish and Jason Momoa and so on. Like, it, like there were these really cool opportunities um, that were coming from doing that. So I, again, I just thought that I, I was set. I was like, okay, we, we got a rhythm, man. This is the growth. And then, and then like March of 2020 hit. Oh, yes. Bro. <laughs> it was like, okay. <laughs> Bro, it's like the momentum. What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Because all the flights, like, well, it was no longer flying to New York. You know, the press junkets. You're not doing a press junket as a person anymore. I'm not flying for Innovation Nation anymore. Like, all all of my stuff was to a degree frozen. Mm-hmm. And so, what I did was, as soon as soon as that happened, I looked around. I was like, you know what? I like let me let me really get my home set up set up let me let me start figuring out how do you really stream from home let me look at the people who've been doing it forever and some of these youtubers and and i've done things I, you know i had done a bunch of youtube programming and whatnot before but but i hadn't really taken the time to to maximize um my home setup for it so i looked at some people who i admired and i was like oh this is that's clean. Like your set is, is fly. And I just went ahead and, and I tweeted, like I, I asked them, I, I reached out to, to one dude, um, Brian McDuff. And, uh, and I asked Brian, I was like, Hey man, so would you mind sharing with me? Maybe like, what, what kind of equipment do you use? Or like, how do you do this and that? Because like, I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to do it in my own way. And he sent me a link to like, okay, well, here's the camera I have. Here's the this, here's the this. Da, 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 da. Cause chief, what I did was I took the money I had and I went onto Facebook marketplace. I went onto Craigslist. I don't know if you're familiar with Craigslist, but I've basically heard. it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you've heard about it. Um, yes, it's like a virtual marketplace. And, and I just started looking, I was like, okay, so let me find this like Sony a6500 camera. Okay. And then, then I got to find like a, a sound source. Okay. Like, let me see, can I find this microphone that's already used so that I don't need to do it? Oh, okay. And then I'm going to need to find a uh, video cards so that it connects it. So, so like piece by piece, mm-hmm. I started like finding these different things. And, and I was so grateful that, that Brian had been generous with the information. Cause you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes we can be a little stingy and we like, well, I'm not going to help this person. <laughs> I was like, if I help this person, then somehow that's going to take away from, from mine. And no, man, like mm-hmm. it's not, it's not no. going to take, because we, we got, we got different lanes. we got different gifts and, yeah. and you succeeding is not going to impair me, you know, from, from succeeding, bro. And so, um, so, so, so anyway, I ended up turning my spot, turning my living room at the time into a set. And, and I made basically a demo video. I made a demo video that showed like, Hey, dear studios, if you hire me to do some virtual programming from you, here's what it would look like. And, um, and this was super duper early on. And, um, and so I sent it on out to like all the studios, like Disney and NBC, like sent it to all of them. And, you know, and I was just like waiting because I didn't really hear anything back yet because they were all trying to figure out yeah. how long is this pandemic going to last? <laughs> like, what are we going to do with our, yeah. you know, with our programming? And, um, but then bit by bit, um, people started reaching out to me from that demo and just from other things they had seen. And they started hiring me in order to like, just do stuff from my home setup. Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the places that reached out was the television Academy. They put on the Emmys. Um, and so I'd had an internship with them in the past. And so they asked me to, um, to host uh, their, their college television awards like from my home. So I pulled out a tuxedo jacket from the closet, like, a, you know, shirt on. Yeah. I did it in my shorts because like the shorts you can't even see on the camera. Um, and I just like changed some lighting, some colors up and I did that. And then other things continued to roll on in. The virtual press junkets started to pop up. So IMDb started having me do interviews, um, but like from home. And so it really started to snowball into this thing to where eventually an Amazon like to start shipping me products to my place. And they were like, here, just do the live stream from home. And then like, we'll cut back and forth. And so Kashif, eventually what ended up happening was, um, ironically, I ended up working more wow. during the pandemic than I had before. Because before I was traveling here and you know, to and fro, and I just had to hope that like, 
I can make it to the airport in time to go to this place and then still get back there. But now it's like, oh, I'm doing it all from home. Mm -hmm. I could work for three different clients all in the same day, yeah. just change my shirt and change the color in the background of the, you know, the thing. <laughs> and now we're on a different program. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so, so that ended up being this really unexpected thing where, um, and so through that, I ended up being able to, um, to save up enough during like the, the beginning of the pandemic um, for me to actually purchase a home. Oh, so like, wow. so now I'm in my very first home. And, um, and, and so now I'm able to have like, a room that's truly dedicated. So this is, I'm not, I'm not, so right now I'm not in the, um, I'm not on my dining room table right now, which is where I was for most of 2020. We're on the dining room table, man. It's like, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat in the bed because I can't eat on the table because then I'm going to mess up the equipment. So, like, so, 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 so it's been a morphing. Um, it's really been a, like a, a wild change and a wild transition um, and just like really trying to keep the momentum up. But I, um, the, one of my, key tenants and, and something that I'm just so thankful that people have like one been like generous with information um and and then the, the second thing is like resourcefulness like I, I really really value being able to take a thing and and maybe that maybe that thing just looks like a rough rock but like finding some way to like take that rock whether you're going to paint that rock or maybe you're going to chisel that rock in a certain way or you even use that rock as a, as a foundation to like hold up a desk or to do something but like really if, if what you got is this rock trying to figure out like what's the most what's the most versatile use that i can come up with for this thing um and uh, and especially since we're in the business of like presentation and of show business yes. and and you know and and, and whatnot like a lot of people, if they're not in this business, they don't understand like how much duct tape it takes <laughs> just like to hold a thing up. <laughs> like, they don't understand because she, what's happening like right on the edges of the frame, right? Okay. It's just like something yeah. crazy is happening over yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You get it. <laughs> well, that's really so, good. Yeah, that that's that. So that's kind of that sort of leads up to where I'm at now. And and um and one more funny thing about like the Emmys. So it was like a full circle moment. Um, that's why I look up because I still have to return. Uh, I've got one up there. Um, for, but from because what what ended up happening was, um, last year for the Emmys. Uh, normally, uh, during the Emmys, I would be backstage and I would um, I've started. I've had the chance to interview presenters for the Emmys like as they walk off the stage so uh so there was one year that I got to talk to Oprah and Dolly Parton and like Matt Damon another time and just like the, these people who, who I admire and like Dave Chappelle just just folks who are backstage um as they as they're walking off from, from the Emmy stage um but this past year you know it was a virtual ceremony a largely virtual ceremony but what they did was they had me um, just host the backstage part from right here, like from the desk I'm sitting at right now. So they 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 sent on over an Emmy statue, and so I put just what I did like back here. I, I know this is audio, so people can't see, but like I've got a shelf behind me right now. I've got like a lamp, a camera, you know, a little plant back there. Well, what I did, I took all that off and I put just had like an Emmy, a statue right back over my shoulder. Again, put on the tux, kept the shorts on, um, and then. <laughs> And then we were able to just like, and, and like, and right now I've got like this purple light going on, but I made that, I think I did keep it purple for that as well too, but it's like, you can, this is all stuff like being, being, uh, having the confidence to play around with the set and with set design yeah. is something that I don't think that I would have had, had it not been for working on Theo's trade and really seeing what it took in order to make this short film look the way that it looked. Had I not spent the time in theater, in high school, in church, and seen like, okay, well, here's how you take this one piece of wood and you make it look like a cross in this way. But like, if you squint this way, if you move like in one inch over here, it don't look Right, but that's why you gotta just make sure that you draw the attention this way. It's a game of like, hey, look over here, that kind of thing. Um, so so had it not been for being able to see a lot of that behind the scenes um, stuff, then it might feel a little bit more intimidating now. 
to try to take a bedroom, you know, and turn a bedroom into backstage at the Emmys or like live on air with Amazon. So it's 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 been one of those crazy kind of things, Kashif. Well, that's really good to hear. Honestly, I feel like everyone, <laughs> if you wanted to have like a successful career, like post COVID or during COVID or paying your bills without having to go and get like a regular nine to four, well, not even nine to five, going to work, working like as that as does like our Walmart or like Target right. and stuff like that. So yeah, so that's really good to hear. Honestly, it's about adapting and thinking ahead and seeing and hustle and grind. I mean, I was saying you before, like, listen, it is what, five almost five o'clock in the US, right? In LA. Yeah, you were like, up. <laughs> listen, guys, it is four minutes to 1 a.m. in the UK, but that is grind culture. And this is what you did. You know what I did? I made sure I had a nap got back up and I was like okay I need to interview Albert so that's what you've got to do <laughs> look and you and you're bringing the energy it don't it does not feel like I'm speaking to Kashif at one in the morning right now y'all he y'all can hear it through the through the airwaves like this is bringing the energy regardless I appreciate you for that <laughs> so what's next so what can you share like what's next for you if you can share because you know things yeah are hush hush so I just got back from, um, I was in Orlando, Florida for about four months, um, working on a project for National Geographic, uh, which was a phenomenal opportunity um, to, to get to speak to all these different explorers and adventurers who either they like work in, they work with people in space or they're paleontologists. So they're, they're like digging and finding dinosaur bones or they're, uh, you know, or they're, they're, they're like real life Indiana Joneses, you know? So you get a chance to speak to these people who are out in the field doing wild things. Um, and, and the whole point of the show is to um, invite kids and families to believe that like, hey, if this is a discipline that I'm interested in, I can actually do this. This is not an impossible thing. Um, and to really keep that spirit of, of adventure alive. So I just finished doing that. Um, and then yesterday or two days ago, I was in Atlanta. So I was doing a, um, like a back to school thing with some different news stations down there. But what's, uh, what's coming up next is uh, I'm, I'm continuing to still work on Innovation Nation. So, um, so I'm going to shoot some more for that next week. Um, I'm still working for Amazon. In fact, today, um, today I did a couple of shows for mm -hmm. Amazon. Um, and so it's, it's like, and so right now, oh, and, and I don't know what's happening with the Emmys. Fingers crossed. Like I, I hope that I get a chance to work with the Emmys in some way this year, but you know, things consistently change. Uh, but, but yeah, right now my goal, one of my key goals is to just kind of continue watering and fostering those relationships that have already um, been built uh, within the industry and to just like hopefully continue to deliver um, on that front, um, but also continuing to keep up with um, with my own entrepreneurial stuff. So, so there's a show that I started on Amazon um, called Nightlight, um, Nightlight with Albert Lawrence. So it's a late night talk show um where it's a very like a, like it's a fun game show kind of format where i play with different products but i bring in um different friends or influencers as guests and uh and we just have like a fun sort of game night thing uh but where everybody who's watching in live also gets a chance to participate um and so i've always wanted to host like a late night show uh and so this has been like a really fantastic opportunity in that sense because she but the thing is like again, like this, it's an entrepreneurial thing. So like, I'm, I'm paying for that show. Like, like I, 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 I pay for the technical director to do the, the tech stuff because yes, I could do it myself. But like, if I'm trying to talk with you and at the same time, pop and make this graphic go up and like pull in this music cue and then switch like uh, uh, to have a two shot of it. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot to be going on when, when what I really want to do is just have a conversation with you. Like, that's yeah. what I want to be able to have my focus on. Um, and so my, my goal, my plan is to continue to like do things like that, but, but to continue to be able to work with people who are my friends and work with people who like I already trust and meet new folks as well too, but to continue to collaborate in a way to where we are all getting a chance to grow together. Shoot, like it's, it's great. So my, my cousin and I, we live together and it's awesome that like, through the work that I do with Amazon, like sometimes I need an extra hand, like in order to like to, to be a cameraman or like as I'm doing shipping and things like for Amazon, like I need like extra hands there. And then so we get a chance to collaborate in that way. And so I just, I love the, I love the idea of squad being able to pull squad um, up together and, and to build up each other. So let's do some more of that. 
Well, that sounds great. I mean, you are busy and you're not going to be slowing down. We continue to manifest more busyness. <laughs> and you, right. work, you know, you know, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say thank you so much for coming on the show, Albert. It's been great having you on as a guest and just to catch up as well. I mean, mm. I told you before, like I was supposed to come out to LA and New York. Yeah. I was going to be like, hey, Albert, I'm in LA. You got to hit me up. up. When you get out here, yeah. you got to hit me up. because I she... will. I will, honestly, because I was supposed to literally last year, I was supposed to come out there in April and then oh. lockdown happened and it just luckily none of my friends booked a flight we just were literally like the following week before the lockdown was announced they said oh we're shutting down everything so I was like Phew, we saved money so we were like oh my God. but yeah but <laughs> next year hopefully you know Biden please let us in um, so that we can come because I'm turning 30 <laughs> next year and I need to be out there to celebrate my 30th. Yes. Um, so, yes, man. Yeah, we, so yeah. We've got some real catching up to do. It'll yeah, And definitely. oh my gosh, and by next year, like, because you, you're so prolific that I feel like you make, I feel like you make three films a quarter. Um, <laughs> and so, 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 so by, the time, by the time next year comes, <laughs> you will have like a whole new encyclopedia um, of, 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 of just work that, that you have done. And especially with you collaborating mm-hmm. with probably, others. You are right. You're right. And yeah. it's so funny that you say that because like, people in the UK are always like you're so busy like I just know you're busy and so for yeah. you across the pond we haven't spoken in like two years and you're saying the right. same thing it's crazy I know but I know you are I know <laughs> I know you're making stuff you're going to be able to have your own marathon film festival binge a <laughs> of just Kashi productions by the time you get back out here next year so I, I look forward to sitting in for some of that <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do is sign on a dotted line with a studio out there and then I'll be fine I don't need to come back to the UK. Done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. I you're really welcome, do. You're welcome. So where can people find you, like your work and like to follow you and stuff? Yeah. Um, so you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Albert Talks. So A-L-B-E-R-T talks t-a-l-k-s because that's what i do um and you can head over to my, my website is albertlawrence.com um and so you can find that that also sort of as a hub for uh for some other things that are that are popping and going on so yeah thank you for asking you're welcome well thank you again honestly it's been great having you on as a guest and yes, thank you guys for listening you can follow me all on my socials the kashif Brew podcast or Kashif Booth Entertainment, or Kashif Booth. You can find me everywhere. Thanks again, guys, for listening. And yeah, stay tuned for new episodes coming soon.